It's called Spring Valley Trout Farm of Dexter, Michigan. And I went there to do a little grocery shopping or fishing. You know, if you're from the Delta, fishing is grocery shopping. So that's what I went and did. I went and caught myself some catfish. So today, what I will be cooking, we will be making Vincent's catfish pinwheels, some roasted potatoes, and some good old cabbage without pork. Yes, I'm looking out for my non-pork eaters today. So y'all sit back, relax, and welcome to yet another episode of In the Kitchen with Vincent. How are we shooting? I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, y'all. So what we're going to do first, we're going to make our filling for our catfish pinwheel. So it's pretty simple. So I started off with some onions, some bell peppers, and some spinach. I chopped them up, minced those vegetables down, and I sauteed them in just two tablespoons of butter. First, I started off with my onions and bell peppers, just making sure that they are cooked down and translucent. And once they are translucent, which is around two to three minutes of cooking, I tossed in my spinach just to cook it down. And that normally takes about three to four minutes. And you just want to make sure it's cooked down enough to be added into your mix. And we ended up with something like this and it almost looks like it's ready to eat like you could really eat it from this point but we're not going to we're going to use it for our mix so to make this mix you're going to take one stick of philadelphia cream cheese i use philadelphia because i think it tastes oh so amazing so i'm just going to open that up just one whole stick you're going to use and toss into a large mixing bowl Now I've been allowing this to sit out and um, get up to um, room temperature so it's not so hard to work with, but it's rather malleable. It's just soft enough to be able to push down into. So right into that, I'm gonna add in my sauteed vegetables, which are still hot and steamy. And then I'm just gonna begin to give that a mix until they are actually evenly distributed. So good. I haven't put a drop of seasoning in this. Alrighty, y'all. So now my mix is to my desired look, and I'm just going to add in just a little bit of Cajun seasoning, Tony's to be specific, and I'm just going to add about a tablespoon or two tablespoons or so, just until it hits your preference. Because y'all know, if it ain't got no flavor, it ain't there. All right. Cool. Alrighty. So now I'm going to take some of this. Some of this crack, it, it's not really crack, y'all. It's Weber's roasted garlic and herb sauce. You can, I mean, seasoning. You can put this stuff on anything, y'all. But I like to drop it into my filling. So you just drop it in there until it hits your desire. And that hit my desire. So we're going to mix that in. I'm sorry. Awesome. Then I'm going to just take a little bit of onion powder. Y'all, I'm being clumsy today. A little bit of onion powder, just a little bit of lemon pepper, and just hit it with a dash of black pepper. Awesome. Give that a mix. Flavor Town, y'all, is smelling good. All right, and the last two things I'm going to add to it before taking it to the fridge, I'm going to take my favorite cheese. Y'all know how much I love Telemook. I'm going to take half of this bag and just drop it into this filling. Then I'm going to take some freshly chopped parsley and get all fancy with it. Just drop it down and in there. And then we're going to give that a mix, y'all. All 
Alrighty y'all, so it's looking like we've hit our desired look. And from this point, since it's very soupy, I'm gonna just hit it with some clean wrap, cover it and refrigerate it. I'm gonna refrigerate it for about 30 minutes or so while I get my sides ready and going. But you wanna make sure that this is still spreadable, but you need it to be cold enough that you can actually work with it with your catfish fillets, which you'll see me do later. But just put it in the fridge, Please have the patience to let it cool and um, let it sit there for at least 30 to 45 minutes. And once we are ready with our cream cheese filling, I'll let you see what that looks like. Thank you, Jesus. You are ready. I am ready when you are um, en enrolling. Alrighty, y'all. So let's get our cabbage started. So I'm just going to get my pot set on medium high heat. Um, and I'm going to put in two tablespoons of butter. Already got it pre-measured out. Just drop it in. No need to get cute. And just make sure that that evenly hits across the bottom of my pot. It doesn't take long for butter to melt, y'all. And while that butter is melting, I'm just going to go ahead and add in about a half a cup. This is just one whole onion diced down. Well, not diced down. I cut it into the long spiral pieces. So just dice down that way. I'm just going to toss that in. Just make sure I coat my onions with that butter well as that butter melts down. And we're going to cook these onions until they're translucent. And once they're translucent, we're going to toss in our chicken stock to get it going before we get our cabbage going. But I'm just going to um, make sure that those onions are cooked down and we'll let you see what that's looking like. Now my onions have hit the desired look and translucency, so now I'm going to begin to add in my whole bottle of chicken stock. And we're just going to allow that chicken stock to get up in temperature and begin to simmer. And once it simmers, we'll be back so we can add the cabbage in and begin seasoning. Alrighty, good people, so now our water, well actually our chicken stock is boiling and it's come up to a nice simmer. So let me just talk you through the spices and the seasonings that we're going to put into this boil. I have one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon and a half of chicken bouillon, I have one and a half of a t um, tablespoon of Himalayan pink salt, and I also have half a tablespoon of minced garlic, and I also added a dash of pepper, and that's really just to your own preference. And I'm just going to toss that into this boiling water. Awesome. Give that a good little mix with our spoon. Oh, wow, y'all, that smells good. That chicken stock and the onion smell great alone, but now with that seasoning, it's really giving it what it's supposed to, it's supposed to have gave, all right? Awesome. And I'm just going to go ahead and take my cabbage from there. And you just, for me, I like to keep my hands in the game, both hands in the game. So I'm going to use one hand to toss the cabbage off in and one hand to just catch any cabbage that we want to come off out of the pot. So this is my little action here. And I dice these cabbage down to about one inch. They're like this, but you don't have to really break that apart. What you can really do is once it cooks down, it's gonna break apart, so don't worry about it. This is as long as you make sure you cut it pretty thin. And don't worry, I'm not getting my hand in the chicken stock. I'm not gonna boil, boil myself or anything. But now that I have all my cabbage in there, I'm gonna put the top on it, and we're gonna let that begin to simmer and cook down. And once that is ready, we'll let you see what it's looking like. But let's get started on our potatoes. Alrighty, so I just diced up some potatoes and I just cut them down into like one inch pieces. So I'm gonna take my potatoes and I have my lovely cast iron that I've had for years. And I'm just gonna take some light olive oil and I'm just going to lightly just hit it with a little bit of oil. I'm going to rub that oil across that pan with my hand. Just getting it. Make sure it's lathered and hit on all sides. And yeah, 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 yeah. And it's going to look something like this. I want to make sure it's completely oiled. 
And then from there, you can really just start adding in your potatoes. No need to get fancy, just get them all in there. <laughs> Alrighty, all of those potatoes, potato, potato, potato. Jesus, we're eating potatoes. <laughs> Alrighty, and once you get all of the potatoes, every single one, into your skillet, there we go. Just going to evenly get them across there, and I'm just going to lightly oil my potatoes. And the reason that I'm doing this, it allows me to um, be able to better season and coat them, because they're going to go into the oven, which I have right now preheating on 375. So as that preheats, I want to make sure that my oil is coating my potatoes. And I'm going to take some of that, some of that crack I told you all about earlier, some of that Weber's garlic, um, garlic and herb seasoning. And I'm going to hit that. And, you know, I'm pretty generous with it because I just really love the flavor of this seasoning, y'all. And it's not super salty. Um, so I'm going to hit it with that. Make sure it fully covers and coats. Just a little bit more. Never be too stingy with it. It tastes delicious, y'all. Then I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of Tony's. Oh, got to open it up first. <laughs> Alrighty. Hit it with a little bit of Tony's. Alrighty, we're just going to rub those in. Alrighty. Y'all, it's looking good, smelling good. And once you get to, oh, I lost one. But once you get there, you should be looking a little something like this this and they're ready to hop into the oven so I'm going to put these in the oven I'm going to first let them roast in there for about 30 minutes give them a check and make sure at that 30 minute point you're going to mix them up just to make sure you're not burning your potatoes and then you're going to let them cook and you're going to just keep an eye on them because it's really up until your preference but the oil is going to help them get crispy all around so don't worry we're going to slide these in the oven and we'll get started on our catfish all right, y'all, so let's get to making our catfish pinwheel. So I already got my fillets, and you know, when those fillets are a little too large, I like to cut down that thin seam of that fillet just to get it off so that I can make the most beautiful and, like, uniform-looking pinwheels as possible. So I have eight fillets from four beautiful catfish that I caught yesterday, and I have my filling, and now I'm just gonna start to make those pinwheels. So my filling is just like a dip consistency now. It's thick, but not too soupy. And I have my chilled catfish fillets, so I'm gonna take one of my fillets, lay it on its inner side. Then you're just gonna take a little bit of that filling, and you're just gonna line your fillet with that. Wanna give yourself plenty, plenty, plenty. I'm going to run it all along the edges of it. And then we have some toothpicks and you're going to begin to roll that in from one thin end to the next, making sure that you try to keep as much of that filling in as possible. And when you're almost to the end, I like to flip them on their sides and that just helps you keep it inside of the pinwheel. And you take two to three toothpicks and I take one at the end just to make sure that it's hot and kept and then I just put one or two more in there just to make sure that my pinwheel is going to keep its shape slide my any of the filling that may have come up I slide it down into it and then you're going to be looking something like this and I'm going to sit it in this container and I'm going to get the rest of them done and then once we have them all completed we're going to add them back to the fridge just to cool and set Praise the Lord. It's a good day on set. Praise God. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. And we are rolling. All righty, y'all. So now our pinwheels have cooled and they are ready to go. So I didn't season them before now, but y'all, you can really just use some light Tonys to your preference. You have to remember what we're about to do is going to also ensure that that catfish is going to be flavorful and full of season. But just to let you know what we're going to do, I have some buttermilk, a buttermilk mix here. So I have like two cups of buttermilk, two or three tablespoons of hot sauce. I have two cups of flour and I have my um, fish meal. I'm so sorry. I have my fish meal, y'all, my fish fry, just whatever fish fry that you like. And I'm just going to really let it go down the conveyor belt. And for me, I'm just going to lightly season my catfish before even getting the process started. Just lightly season in the top of them, give them a flip. 
and just make sure I season all the way around them. Because this is your chance to lock in that flavor, y'all, before you get frying. Get the outsides and the edges. Now that it's cooled and you can actually touch them and move them around a little bit. Alrighty, and then for me, because my pot isn't super large, I'm only going to do four of these at a time. So I'm just going to start by taking one of my pinwheels and dropping them down into our buttermilk mixture. I have a fork here to help work it. Then I'm going to take that to the flour and just let it dance in that flour, give it a nice coat. And awesome, make sure you fully cover it with that flour. And you're gonna submerge it one more time in your buttermilk. And then you're gonna take it over to your fish meal. And you're gonna roll it in there. Roll it, roll it, roll it, get it a nice coat. Make sure you hit the top sides and corners, y'all. Top sides and corners. I just like to bury mine in the cornmeal a little bit. And then what you're gonna come out with is a finished pinwheel and it looks just like that and i'm going to do these for all of them and once we're ready and once we have them all done and coated you're going to meet me by the fryer my pinwheels are going and y'all just a note you want to make sure that you have faith in the product that you just made all right so while they're in the fryer, they're going to um, they're going to maybe start releasing some of those pieces of spinach. But as long as you see your individual pinwheel, please take your time and let it solidify and harden and get that crust. Because if not, when you do move it in the casing, the outside casing itself, everything spills out. So you just have to have faith that it will be there. And once it starts to float, or you start to see your pinwheels come off the bottom, then you can start playing with them and kind of seeing where they are. But remember, take your time and it will be cooked. Just watch it, pay attention to it, and you know if it fries and it floats, it's ready to go. So y'all just patience. Patience, paciencia, you fail, okay? Look at those dang potatoes. Her, her, her. Potatoes. That's why I love cab signs. Why is that? They, they, the way that they crisp things and the way that they hold heat is almost like a stovetop. You know what I mean? Cast irons allow you to get that heat and cook like it's on the stovetop, and it's just I don't know. It makes those potatoes have this crisp crunch when you roast them that you can't get on the baking sheet. So that's what it is. Yeah. Alrighty, y'all, it's my favorite time of the episode. It's time to eat. So, y'all, I have my catfish pinwheel, my cabbage, and my roasted potato. So, I think I'm going to start with my sides, and then I'm going to work to the main entree. Oh, drop the spoon. It's good for now. I'll clean it later. It's time to eat. Alrighty. So, I'm going to taste these cabbage. Let's give it a smell. Oh, yeah. Smell right. Smell right. Mmm. Tastes like growing up coleus. And I'm not even stretching. This tastes like my dad's grandmother's cabbage, minus the pork. So for my non-pork eaters, this is the recipe for you. Give this one a try. Alrighty. Roast the potatoes. Mm. Okay, y'all. Who said you need to have French fries with fried fish? These fr these roasted potatoes with the crunch and that garlic and herb Weber season that I told you is like crack is given what it's supposed to give. All right, and my, you hear that? Crispy, crispy. All right, so I'm gonna break into this um, catfish pinwheel and give it a try as well. Oh, oh my goodness. Just look at all that juiciness coming out of there. Righty, break into that catfish. Give it a try. Mm. I gotta go back. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, y'all. This has been one of my favorites, but every time I make these pinwheels, I mix. It's an exciting, it's like a burst of flavor. For us catfish eaters, mm, I'm sorry, y'all. All right, for us catfish eaters, it's, fried catfish is something you eat all the time, but these catfish pinwheels gives you this explosion of flavor with the cream cheese and the taste of that cheddar, that Telemu cheddar, just to be specific, and also the spinach and the sauteed onions and peppers. It is everything. And you know, I know that you wish you were sitting right here in my kitchen right now eating this. So go ahead, share it with your family. Cook it. Share this recipe with your family. It's the moment to do it, y'all. The food looks good. I'm having a great time. I'm about to feed my team. But I just wanted to personally take the time to thank you all for joining me this week for another episode of In the Kitchen with Vincent. I do not take your presence here lightly. I'm so blessed to have you, and I'll see you all next week. <laughs> Thank you.